here. So just so that uh, you're sure you know who's who, the guy uh, with the jacket is the entrepreneur, the guy with the shirt is the government official. And we got that set. Uh, glad to be here at this great event. Matan, thank you uh, for your kind words and uh, really I think looking at this industry work from year to year shows the great potential that we have. Um, I think we're going to talk a little bit more about macro perspective. Look at the ecosystem, both in Israel and global. Try to see uh, how we got here and where are we going, I think. From our perspective, 2014 was a great year for cyber. Uh, many Israeli startups raising money. Uh, the business is good, I believe. Looking at uh, what Checkpoint and other companies are doing in 2015, shaping up to be uh, just as good as the year. But, but we are, uh, we're in Israel. And, uh, you know, as, as the former president Perez says, that the biggest contribution of the Jewish people to mankind is dissatisfaction. <laughs> We're never satisfied. I want to talk about the challenges. I want to talk about the things that, uh, at least from our perspective, we see as problematic. And let, let me throw one data point at you, Gil, and let's see what you think about it. So, again, while we see the fundraising is strong, and many companies are raising money, and obviously that's good, because venture capital is the fuel to the technology industry, this is still not reflecting in sales. And we see many small companies now finding it a little bit hard to penetrate the customers, to create the scale, and certainly to ramp up. Uh, what's your view on that? How do you look at the ecosystem? Is this good? Is it just a phase? Uh, what are the main challenges that those companies have when trying to go into the market? I think first we have a great ecosystem with a lot of good ideas and great entrepreneurs. I think the challenge that entrepreneurs face, not just in Israel, all over the world, is that there is too many of, of the us or them. There's too many good ideas, there's too many companies, and if you just look at the ability of the buyer, in most cases it's the head of the IT department in any company to absorb all these new technology, it's almost impossible. If, when I started Checkpoint, every year there were, let's say, one or two new big trends in technology, and in each area there were three companies competing to be the best and then every company or every idea got a chance and every company that was really good got the chance to be the leader if you think about the fact that today in our world i don't know the numbers but i think it's in the thousands of new companies every year a buyer of technology cannot look at all these ideas cannot evaluate them and that makes it very very hard for a for both the startups and the large companies to promote new, completely new products or completely new categories. And also from the macroeconomic perspective, the, the amount of money that's invested had to be divided not amongst the, the top 20, 50 or 100 companies, but amongst the 5,000 companies. And that makes the share of everyone smaller. And I think that's a global uh, challenge. Uh, I don't know if there's a good solution for it. I think that's the, the market power that they have to take care of. It. Yes, yeah, so let me share with you at least some of the things we've been doing within the Office of the Chief Scientist because I, I agree very much with, uh, with the challenge, even though I would say, and I, I know you agree, that in, in several aspects it's easier to be an entrepreneur in 2015 than maybe it was yeah. 20 or 25 years ago. Technology building blocks are there. You can, we heard from the youngsters about the things they can do just by accessing open source technology or cloud and so on. Um, at least I believe, and, and I have to say it because every time I go on stage I say that the most important word in the world of innovation is collaboration. And it's our belief that a lot of the challenges can be overcome by collaborating. And uh, of course collaboration is industry and academia, which is, uh, which is relevant to this place, but it's also between companies. And here it's where big companies can work with small companies because each of them is getting something from the deal. Sometimes you're getting cutting edge technology, which not necessarily is within your priorities, while the smaller company is getting the infrastructure, the market, the understanding, and the channels. So a lot of our platforms and funding schemes are exactly to make those combinations. Is Checkpoint doing any of that? We are. We do have programs that we first we work with many many startups, learning what they're doing. With sometimes we acquire them. Just this year, we acquired two uh, small Israeli startups with uh, very one without sales and one with very little sales. Uh, and when, we've, when we think that they are a great base for some of key capabilities in our products in the, in the next few years. Um, I think there's also another, a lot of room for other things. For example, we have what we call a friend cloud IntelliStore. And that's in the, in the 
the subject we are discussing here, we are creating a marketplace for companies that have cyber intelligence about future attacks, uh, and we are allowing all our customers, big audience of customers, to access that information and, and the prevention that we can deduct out of the work of these companies. So that's, that's an example of working like that. But at the end of the day, one thing we have to remember about startups, uh, for startup it's, uh, it's really the life of the people who are doing them and they have to fight for their future. It's not the collaboration or other people that have, will take care of them. Every entrepreneur has to understand that they are going to go into a, a big, big, I don't want to call it a fight, it's not a negative thing, but a st big struggle to find their unique place in the world and prove it to the world and be winners of their own. Uh, yet I think again we can do a lot to reduce some of the, some of the risks because we want, we want people taking that, taking that challenge which is, which is important. Let's talk a little bit about Israel. Checkpoint is a, is a, is a multinational company obviously, a global company, but you're, you have very strong Israeli roots. No, no need to explain I think to anyone in the audience. Uh, at least from our perspective, we're seeing both phenomena happening, and we can talk about cyber, even though it's not limited to that, with multinational companies coming to this country to set up uh, R&D, mostly centers here, leveraging the innovation ecosystem. And Joey, I want to show a little bit about the strength of Tel Aviv or Israel in general as such. We also see some Israeli companies sometimes uh, going the other way around, uh, at least focusing on, on government's role, but obviously I'd love you to talk about more. Uh, we have the OCS incentives, which take some of the financial burden and are very important, and we know that many times that R&D funding is essential to companies when they make the decision. We have, of course, also regulation, and regulation is also important in the world of cybersecurity. Regulation, which includes both export control policies as well as intellectual property limitations as of such, could, can be meaningful. Certainly, it's my perspective as, as the chief scientist and the promoter of the industry that we should be as open as possible to promote the industry without harming national security naturally, and there should be a balance. But apart from national security, there should be no other uh, factor impacting the regulation. How does Checkpoint look at that? How is Israel leveling up with other places? Um, I'll start with talking specifically on regulation and export control. Uh, luckily, as a company that mainly talks about defense, uh, there is little export control on what we do, and we get along pretty well with the government, so I don't have any complaints. I think in general, and I do hear this phenomenon today, about cyber com about actually large Israeli companies that are uh, dealing with cyber, that are actually trying to buy companies outside Israel and keep their intellectual property and keep their people outside Israel, so they are not forced to work by the regulation that's in Israel. That's not a good phenomenon for Israel or anywhere in the world. It's better that to have these companies here and to have these people here, and to have and it's better to have for the country. It's better to have little control than to have no control at all on what they, on what's being done in these spaces. Um, and I think that's what the one thing in macro that governments have to remember today. In the internet world, uh, there is no boundaries, and companies, whether it's from taxation or regulation or access to people, companies can move very quickly, and companies can go everywhere they want, and there is no physical boundaries to, anymore to where a company should be. And Israel should be a, a much more a very competitive place for companies that they want to base their, uh, again, both their people, their intellectual property, their uh, profits, all of that. As a country, we have to compete for the company because the world is open and Israel, as much as I love it and I'm based here and my company is here and I want to be here, uh, it's not the only place in the world. And uh, again, as an entrepreneur, many, many startups are Israeli startups, but then they create themselves as non Israeli companies, and that also has a lot of advantages in the world when, the, when Israel is not always the best uh, brand name for political reasons, not for technology reasons. Yeah, so, so we're very aware of the competitive space, and again, Israel is not, not unique in its innovation policies or capabilities. We do have a very strong ecosystem. A lot of what we do, and uh, as part of the Office of the Chief Scientist, is to worry about the next 20 years. So you know, we're, kind of, we're kind of close to wrapping up, so I want to talk about the last 20 years and the, and the next 20 years, and again, we'll do it macro and micro. So from our perspective, uh, the last 20 years were all about creation. You know, uh, obviously, it's some of the forefathers of the Israeli high tech is here, but in the let's say late 80s, there was 
certainly the startup nation was not in place. There was very little high tech in this country. And in these 20 years, and government, I believe, played a positive role in that, an ecosystem was created with venture capital and human capital, with stronger industry academia collaboration, with uh, a very supporting, of course, the, the, uh, the entrepreneurs that we see. And actually, everybody's an entrepreneur. It doesn't matter what your role is, right? You're the, you're the coordinator, we have researchers, we have company, we have government officials. We're all entrepreneurs in this country. I think the next 20 years are going to be about something different. At least from our perspective, it is about, well, first of all, keep your leading position because we worked hard to get in there. But second is how can we increase the economic impact? And how can we, and again, it was shown, Muli Eden talked about the education part. That's so how, how do we increase the number of students? And true not only for uh, high schools, it's true also for graduates of these places. Uh, it's also about how do we bring that innovation and notion to larger sectors within the industry, larger sectors within the country. And certainly that, that, that that's how we look at things, looking at the next 20 years. And it's, it's one of the reasons some of you might have heard why we're creating a new national uh, administration authority for technological innovation, because we realize that we can't keep doing what we've done. And this again goes to, to checkpoint, you know, because you grew very, very quickly, but obviously you're, you're becoming of age. You know, you're no longer a, a younger person. I'm not talking about yourself. You're certainly very young. Uh, by the way, just an advice here. One of the reasons I moved to government is to be young again. Because in high tech, we're kind of old. You move to government, all of a sudden you're very young. We're investing in these programs in Tel Aviv University when you get there. You go. So you get a share of the young. You get a share of the youngster. You can see this 14 year uh, and, and feel young again. So last 20 years and next 20 years. What's your take on that? First, I've, I've never tried to foresee the future. I don't think that I can. And. Uh, I think it's usually, even if you got the right direction, you are not going to, to have it timed and sized correctly. Uh, but I think definitely we have a challenge, and definitely as a country, we can, I mean, first, the country is doing great in terms of high tech. You talked about education, so yes, we need to have more students for computer science. And if you look at that phenomenon, there's clearly things we can do better. Look at the big universities. In the major universities in Israel, the number of computer science students has not changed in the last 20 years, the last 30 years. Maybe except for Be'er Sheva, which really extended in Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, uh, the number of computer science students is the same. And, and it's not a big number, it's a few hundred students every year. So the demand in the industry is bigger, and if we can get these excellent universities to educate, to double and triple the number of students, it still be hundreds every year, but, but that can have a big impact on the universities and mainly on the economy with better supply of excellent people that the universities have. Uh, there's a lot of other things we can do, and the main one, I mean, there's two things. One of them is education, the other is to attract companies to be here. And if I want to be critical on one thing, I think four or five years ago there was an initiative in the government to uh, attract companies to be here and simplify all the rules about uh, preserving and uh, attracting companies to, to be based in Israel. The last three, four years, uh, pretty much, uh, the last three years, not even four years, pretty much neglected this initiative. And as a company in the industry, we feel that, well, there's a lot of government officials that understand it and have a good will in that. The actual ac action is basically telling companies, go away. We, we don't want you more than we want a, a big bank or any other company in the country. Uh, and that's the action. Again, people are saying good things and people have goodwill. And I think the country has to remember that because that's the companies that uh, will either move or some of their operations from here or the companies will simply, will, when they become large, they won't be here. But checkpoint 20 years from now, at a more personal level. I wish I knew. I mean, I, uh, <laughs> I'd like to believe that we stay similar to where, where we've been with a lot of with excellent people, with creativity, leading a market, sometimes maybe creating a market. I mean, 20 years ago we created the internet security or the firewall market. Uh, we are working on many other things. Today we're investing in mobile security. That's a huge threat for the future. Uh, we are investing in the, all the new technologies in threat prevention. And we believe that we have the best products and, and the best architecture and the best solution. But it's still for us to prove it. That won't take just one year. It will be a five-year journey and a 10-year journey. And, hopefully a 20 year journey.
So, so I, think, I think this, this conference is showing how much the, the perimeter is expanding. We talked about mobile, the internet of things, and wearable. I mean, you've had years and years, I think, of growth in this industry. Certainly from our perspective, I think one of the goals or challenges will be uh, to have 20 or 50 checkpoints. I think when we have that as a country, uh, you know, we, we're sure to have a, a very safe and, and, bright, uh, and bright future. And I think uh, a lot of what brought us here, which is that, that unique collaboration and partnership between industry and academia and government, uh, can also be the, the, the founding stone for the year to come. So I want to thank you, you know, for this uh, greatly intimate conversation. And thank you, Matan. Thank, thank, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you both. Uh, thank you. And again, uh, thank you for Rashid and David who joined us. Uh, you guys both spoke about the future. This is the future, and I think it's, uh, it's a bright and promising future. So thank you all for joining us today. And again, thank you guys. Thank you very much.